Well, thank you all for, again for being here. Such an honor to have you all on stage. I wanted to start at the beginning, I guess, and, and ask Director Fung, you started out in, as an art director in a military art troupe like this. I was curious uh, if you had had intentions or plans to make this part of your life a film at some point, or if it was uh, Galing's novel that sparked the awareness or the interest in making this film or telling this portion of your life on screen. Uh, I actually wanted to make this movie uh, for many years. As soon as I became a director, I had the thought of making a movie that would tell the story of, of what I'd been through. Uh, but it was a long time before I found this the right story. Yeah,我们俩见面聊起来,我想拍这么一部电影的时候,这个格林也说他也很有兴趣去写这样一个电影。但是他说这个可能要等一下他,因为他手里还有两个别的剧本要写,所以就等了格林两年吧。然后他说
process of working together in this as the screenplay came together? Uh the book was so rich and so full of characters and story and, and material that it was hard to make it fit into the format of a film where time is limited. This film is two hours and 15 minutes. And so obviously choices needed to be made. And these days audiences are so busy, uh, time is limited. So to be able to get them to uh, spend two hours in one room watching your movie is quite an achievement.最后才结出果实来而且小说的看小说的读者他们是喜欢看到这样一棵树就是说他有枯枝败叶他有很多的这个细节在里边树上爬的虫子这个地上掉的烂果子但是电影不是这样的电影观众对电影的要求就是它是一棵干干净净的树好像也没有树叶更不能有枯枝败叶这些弦笔都不能有它希望每一场戏都接一个果子 In uh, one example, one analogy or metaphor would be that a novel is like a tree or it grows from a small tree into a big tree and it sprouts leaves and then fruit grows on the tree. And the experience of reading a book can be like seeing it in such detail that you even see the, the barren limbs of the tree with no leaves on it or the bugs on the bark of the tree or the fruit that is lying rotten on the ground. But with a film, it needs to be just one clean tree. You don't even have time for the leaves, uh, much less the fruit. Uh, but you also have to deliver the fruit. So, Gurling的工作特别重要的就是他怎么把那么长的一个小说变成一个两个多小时的剧本。然后我的工作就是在他这个剧本的基础上继续的。So Gurling would take the, you know, just made it shorter and, and wrote a script and had to get rid of so much and then talk about the adaptation process, uh, the director would need to make her cut even more and more. Uh, Gilling, how was that process for you, that pairing back? You just mentioned how important and special this time was for you personally and how important these characters were to you. How did you come to make those cuts in the in, in to, to shape it into the screenplay? When you're adapting your own work, I must I would imagine it must be something of a challenge to constantly have to cut away and cut away as we've been talking about. So what was your what was your approach in the in the adaptation process? Well, um, <laughs> um, I, I actually I'm um, clueless, <laughs> you know. <laughs> just uh, um, uh, anything that uh, uh, can be told uh, by words, by lines, uh, I will not, uh, you know, um, uh, to describe it uh, how it looks. You know, once the, the the looks, the images can tell 
the, the meaning, the story, I will not use the, the lines. So, and the, all these uh, uh, over, uh, voiceover is uh, um, uh, actually just uh, something that is not really uh, uh, um, uh, parallel uh, with the story. So I think that's, um, it, I don't know, I just have instinct, I just have uh, uh, guts feelings, I, uh, you know, to talk about te techniques, I don't know, mm -hmm. and I just uh, follow my uh, intuition. During the process, did you and uh, Director Fung have any disagreements about, or maybe just a uh, difference of opinions about what memories to include or what stories to tell from his troop versus your troop and how maybe you experience those two, that moment in time and, and, and that experience differently? Are there any of his memories in the film that you decided to include or are there any of your memories that he, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, before we uh, uh, started to adapt this uh, uh, script from the novel, and the uh, director also uh, contributed some of uh, his experiences. So I uh, uh, tried to combine. Um, and because, you know, uh, male, <laughs> you know, uh, men's uh, 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 point of view or their memory sometimes are very different. <laughs> from uh, <laughs> from <laughs> women, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. So um, I think it's I I if if you want to have later on the the, the male uh, audience, you better just uh, respect the <laughs> what <laughs> what the uh, man remembers. This Gerling short is between the two main characters. 和小平和刘峰在讲这个故事。然后我拍这个文工团的这个故事的时候，其实最早的一个初心是以是源于某一个形象的记忆，一个细节。The two main characters, Xiaoping and Liu Feng, were the central characters that were really part of Ge Ling's memory. And to to convey those characters was the main was the most important thing. Uh,就是我对那些文工团的女孩的那种集体的那样的一种印象，我觉得那是特别美的，就是在夏天，他们去穿着军装，但是因为他们去洗澡回来，他们就空空堂的。光着脖子，穿着这个军装，头发是湿的，然后他们走过来的时候，端着那个脸盆，我觉得整个操场都香了。所以这个是最早，其实我想拍这个电影的一个一个原因。<笑><笑><笑> On the other hand, what he remembers was the, the overall effect of the group of, of kids together uh, during the summer, wearing their army uniforms, maybe with wet hair, and carrying the basin through the yard. And the, in that moment, the entire yard was fragrant, and you could just, you could just smell the, uh, the beauty. And uh, that's what he remembers. Speaking of the two main characters, uh, Liu Feng and Xiaoping, he, Lei Feng, has a very, he's compared to this other uh, Li Feng character. Well, he's this heroic, legendary figure from the People's Liberation Army. And he's compared to him. He's the living version of him. But she, Xiaoping, there is no other corollary for her in the sort of this heroic, romantic PLA tradition. I wonder first if you could both talk about the significance of this figure, this heroic military figure uh, for the period, um, and then how that figure comes to shape our understanding of Liu Feng, the, sto uh, Li Feng the, st the character, but then was there a female equivalent in, in this heroic sort of romantic military history that Zhao Ping represents, or was she in some way created as a kind of counterpart to that figure, a real life counterpart to that figure? I'm wondering how he how these things been have were balanced? Um, 
Well, uh, that, you know, uh, Liu Feng represents the he uh, heroes back then in our uh, youth uh, is uh, um, men of n not no importance. And uh, the greatness uh, uh, derived out of this uh, uh, non-importance. So uh, it's uh, um, um, it, it he he would uh, you know th so this this is uh, what we really uh, uh, in the army there's no war and uh, oh actually Liu Feng was like an errand boy mm -hmm. for all these. Uh, girls and uh, anything any emergency he has to take care of he has no uh, real um, you know just uh, something like a uh, 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 star uh, on the stage uh, he is not that kind of person but uh, that is uh, uh, w what uh, we, uh, we we respect in the in Lai Feng, you know that uh, everybody knows. Uh, and if only He Xiaoping, this person was always uh, um, mistreated and bullied, uh, and he she uh, uh, discovered that uh, the that uh, thing that uh, he ma he was made of uh, um, uh, uh, errand boy actually is uh, something goodness. You can call it goodness, uh, and he r realized this. Uh, you know, this is uh, something uh, she can love. Not every uh, girl can love. Mm -hmm. They don't really appreciate this. They can. Uh, all these girls uh, will uh, make him uh, uh, some kind of model, but not uh, a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. They don't give the the love. Who? Uh, uh, who grew up um, uh, uh, deprived of this this kindness, uh, this goodness? Uh, so she fell in love with, with this kindness. That's what I felt was interesting about this the f this heroic figure and how he's re referenced in the film, because so many of the the members of the troupe refer to Liu Feng as being the living embodiment in a kind of an ironic or mocking way. F and, and she was the one who sort of recognized a sincere sort of connection to him. But at that time was, because uh, forgive me for not knowing, Liu Feng, uh, Liu Feng the, the hero was, I mean, were, were was he considered? Was that, was that sort of story considered sort of like passe at the time? Or was it really taken seriously in the sense that if you were referring to someone ironically or that that might be something that would be, um, you know, considered disrespectful. Um, people uh, 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 sincerely think he, you know, in a, uh, 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 peace time, in uh, this kind of uh, uh, person, you know, uh, who is, uh, you know, we, we always call it Lei Feng, right? Uh, Lei Feng, and uh, this kind of quality is the heroic heroic um, because he's uh, so selfless uh, uh, so uh, uh, um, you know so everything he does with great or small self sacrifice so this is uh, you know uh, what we uh, when we grew up uh, knowing to respect mm -hmm. uh, um, but you know then when he he was uh, put on the pedestal uh, by all these uh, 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 people but when he walked up uh, walk down and it's tell somebody and uh, hold somebody people will think it's a pretty yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's a, it's a, it's like a Jesus comes and uh, to tell me and uh, touch me <laughs> oh creepy <laughs> <laughs> well that sort of segues to another question I had um, director Feng, you built your career, you started your career in making um, sort of, I guess, well, romantic comedies, but also very sharply observed social commentary, you know, comedies, sort of satires of, uh, gentle satires of contemporary Chinese life. And recently you've turned to historical subjects, period pieces, um, to explore other themes that also sort of comment on contemporary Chinese life. When you're working in the historical mode, 
there always seems to be the challenge of nostalgia, overly romanticizing the past. And that it seems to be something that you very carefully balance in the film. There's a, v there's a really strong nostalgic romantic uh, you know, uh, atmosphere about the troop and about this moment in Chinese history, but also there's a lot of cruelty, there's a lot of conflict, there's a lot of pettiness, um, which really balances out that nostalgia. I'm wondering when you were making, when you were working on this, the script and then you're shooting the film, if you were thinking about that, um, balancing nostalgia with the sort of reality of what that time actually was. I think Chingun Our time as youths was quite rough and it was quite difficult. But when anyone thinks of their youth, uh, they can't really think of it in terms of good or bad. Um, but it, it's something that means a lot and makes you very uh, feel passionately. People in our generation have really lived through a lot, and we I consider us very lucky to have been through the trials uh, that we went through, and it's quite precious. Of change, I'm sorry, uh, not only trials, but so much change uh, in, 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 in society and through the history. Kids these days, on the other hand, <laughs> they uh, have, the, have experienced a lot of change uh, through electronics and through the internet. Um, they have everything. We had nothing. Uh, so we've been through a lot. And you guys haven't. <laughs> Tayo 蒙古1942这个电影是政府把灾民抛弃的不管这个电影是一个集体这个文物团这个集体把刘峰和何小平抛弃这是一个这次我们总结下来不知道为什么都是抛了拍了一些和抛弃有关系 so you might notice that there's a theme of abandonment in my films, whether it's uh, in the assembly, uh, the big army uh, abandons a small platoon. 
or in Aftershock, it's a mother abandoning her daughter after the earthquake, or in 1942, the government of uh, Henan province abandoning the people during the famine. This movie is about the group, the troop, abandoning Ho Xiaoping. I don't know why, I just keep writing about this theme of abandonment. It's very interesting. I, was, I wanted to return back to your generation, and as ching Sin mentioned in the introduction, you did not enter the film industry in the traditional way. The traditional path, I, I gather, is you join, you, you get accepted into the Beijing Film Academy, you graduate with an apprenticeship at a studio, you work your way up the ranks, and finally you're allowed to direct. That's the traditional route. You, uh, my understanding is that you were accepted into the Beijing Film Academy in the art, in the production design department, in the art department, but it was too expensive, so you ended up joining the military and joining this troupe and beginning your craft, learning your craft that way. I wonder e I'm wondering when you were making this film, if you had a chance to reflect on how that experience made you a different filmmaker than maybe other filmmakers of your generation, or maybe perhaps better prepared you for the film industry that you discovered when you first started making your films? Uh,我觉得,对,我没有上过大学,然后其实初中也没怎么好好上,因为那时候是文化大革命。但是我觉得学习 不是只有在大学里可以学到，而且我觉得拍电影也不是别人可以教会的。其实我觉得最好的学习就是热爱。当你热爱，哎，一个事物的时候，你就会能够主动的去学习，而且在社会上学习，有的时候比在大学里学习
I think there's some, I'm assuming there's some thematic connections between this artistic representation or this theatrical presentation of war in the dance troupe. We see them carrying guns, we see them carrying flags, and then this very realistic, chaotic, brutal depiction of actual warfare in the end of the film, or towards the end of the film. I'm curious if you could talk a bit about how you thought about camera movement in relation to the dancers and the dance sequences, and then how you had you rethink camera movement in relation to the depicting warfare. Film students can leave now. <laughs> oh, the ones who were there yesterday at the uh, master class. Okay. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> 我的记忆中的影像，他们的一张一张的脸，他们的形体，都是在那种阳光底下，像如水一样的流淌的，是那样的一种感觉。所以我觉得他应该是一个镜头特别自由的、舒缓的、没有剪接去打断的这样的一个
。对，我觉得现在我们看到的很多电影，包括我看过很多您的片子，我们欣赏一个演员的表演的时候，已经是通过了，可能是技术很好的摄像，以及可能很 fancy 的这种剪辑之后才欣赏到的。所以我从来没有机会目睹过，就是在片场这些演员表演的时候的张力。所以我就想问一下，您可可不可以就是分享一下，在您非常长、非常成功的这个导演生涯中，哪一次的一个场景、某个演员的表演，就是深深的可以扎到您的心里，可以分享一下这样的经历吗？谢谢。我的问题是这样。Yeah, Trent. 我我先翻译问题。Uh, I'm a third year writing student.、Uh, thank you, Director Fung.、Uh, I Totally agree with what you said. That technique can be taught, but、uh, character cannot. This question is very difficult to translate. How to translate this question? About acting, can we use English? Ask me. So it's like I think the director of the Godfather once said some, something like this. Making film, the most important thing is like the, the script writing and also like the character acting. <coughs> so like <coughs> during your really, really long, really <coughs> successful career, could you just like share any experience like what kind of like acting some character have in, on your set really have moved you? Could you like share that experience with us? 每部电影，我都遇到有演员给我贡献特别好的表演。Every single actor in every single one of my movies has given that impression on me. This is actually a very young cast, obviously, and, and a lot of new actors. But I mean, very young in their careers too. What was your experience, sort of directing the sort of non-star, very you know, young cast in terms of their experience? Because their performances are all very amazing, particularly even as their older characters. I thought. 呃，首先我觉得我们其实每个导演都有义务，呃，培养更多新的演员出来。呃，这个故事它不太适合明星来演，它就适合这些新鲜的这些面孔呃来出现。然后这些新人其实就是你要给他足够的时间，让他能够进入到这个情境里边去。我们是提前了四个月的时间，最长的有五个月的，短的是三个月的。我们就把他们集中在一起训练、排练、舞蹈、排练乐队。在影片开始的时候，他们已经都相信大家是文工团这个一个集体的，都非常熟悉了。嗯。I believe that every director has an obligation to cultivate、uh, new talent, but this movie. Really doesn't suit using movie stars. It it really is just obviously calling out、uh, for using new actors.、Uh, we shot for a long time, two to three months. 呃，两三个月是排练还是整个的拍摄？就包括拍摄。啊，排练。呃 ，so only just the the act of 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 rehearsing and preparing it was two to three months. So by the time they shot the movie,、uh, the whole troupe was already quite feeling like they were the characters and 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 had that. Sense of familiarity with each other. Question in the back here. Let's run the mic up to the back. Hi, director Feng Xiaogang and Ms. Yan Geling. I really enjoyed your movie. I think you are both heroes of our times for making a film about the Cultural Revolution. And as you all know, the、uh, censorship in China is actually tightening since 19th, you know, CPP CC meeting. But how come the censorship doesn't exist for you? Since last year you made I'm Not Madame Bovary, and this year you made a movie that's actually pretty critical of the Cultural Revolution. I can answer this Chinese question. My question is, why? First of all, I think you two are the heroes of our time. Your two films have talked about a very sensitive time in our history, which is the Cultural Revolution. So we all know that in China, the Cultural Revolution has been happening for quite a long time. The Cultural Revolution has been happening for quite a long time. 但为什么对您来说这个审查制度好像并不存在？然后您是如何完成这部电影的制作，得到比如说军方的支持，甚至让它能在主流的院线上映的？这个
，我觉得我这一辈子拍了多少电影啊，拍了多少好电影，不是我值得骄傲的事实际上，对我，我承受了多大对我的误会，这是我觉得是特别自豪的事儿。<笑>做任何一件事情都不可能像你说的，我有什么特例，没有可能的。就是为什么我拍的这些可以拍，是因为别人根本就不去拍这个，只有我在拍。It's it's really not a question of how many good movies I make in my life, um, but how many uh, misperceptions and misconceptions that I can correct. It's not a special privilege that I have to make this movie. It's just that no one else has made these movies. Okay, let's go um, in the back here. Woman in the back on the far side. Uh, actually, the woman on the uh, the uh, towards the aisle. Yeah, right there. I wanted to talk <laughs> about autobiography. When we met in Shanghai, um, director Feng Shanghai told me this is not my story, but those are stories that of people that I have watched. So I was more like an observer. And here you are here. And uh, I have a suspicion that the dancer who is selected for her writing abilities might be a stand-in for you. So I'm trying to figure out where each of you is located in the story. That's那个读旁白的，就叙述这个故事的人，在这个电影里头，他也是一个舞蹈演员，他叫肖穗子。这个肖穗子实际上就是歌伶的，啊，这个他用这个肖穗子这个第一。主人公的这样的一个角度来叙述这个故事。我认为那个肖穗子是严格林,只是我觉得严格林会比那肖穗子更好看。The <笑> narrator of the film uh, is a dancer, and her name is Xiao Suizi, and she is the character that Goling has chosen to be the first person uh, of the story, and I believe that is Goling. The only thing is, I think that Goling is much more beautiful than Suizi is. I, uh, th th these are all fict uh, fictitious. Uh, uh, it's, it's a fiction. <laughs> the, uh, it's, uh, um, but you know, well, uh, it the Xiao Suizi is very close to my own experience, and uh, I was uh, um, sent to the field hospital to uh, interview the, uh, the wounded soldiers. So, um, well, you know, s in fiction, <coughs> this is a fiction, right? <laughs> so it's, uh, everybody is made up. So uh, there was a question in the back. Um, yeah, right there. Can you bring the mic to her? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I was really touched by this story. Uh, uh, I think it's really good memory for your uh, your generation's uh, uh, youth and uh, your experience for your life um, about uh, live and uh, death. Uh, I have a question: Is after you produce this movie today, you are sitting here, both director and uh, scriptwriter? Um, um, beside the memory of your youth, do you have any other uh, uh, thinking uh, or? Like about the community, about history, uh, or you have more idea for share with us. If you have a more chance to um, do the film again, thank you very much. Um, uh, I think this film is very moving. I was watching the whole process, and I was constantly controlling my tears. 那啊， uh, 我可以感感受到这个故事就是是一个非常非常好的一个作品，去纪念呃九零的那一代人的呃呃非常呃 fantastic 的这个生命的历程。那啊， uh, 我的问题是，除了就是在这个电影已经放在大屏幕以后，今天除了呃是一种纪念以外
呃，那你有没有更多的，就是除了这种 memory， 除了纪念本身以外，还有更多的体验有没有？或者说，有跟观众分享，或者说，如果还有呃第二次去重新制作电影的话，还有没有想改进的地方？谢谢。呃，第一个，这个就是这个电影要你能够感觉到的是什么，就都在这儿了。你感觉不到的，我背后有要说什么的。如果你感觉不到的话，它存在是没有意义的。那个背后，还有一个就是，任何一个电影都不可能再重新拍一遍。<笑>所以，这个当然我特别感谢啊 ，My Movie Touch Your Heart。For this film, whatever you feel is what's what's there, and whatever you're not feeling、uh, has no existence. I'm sorry, and I wouldn't be able to make this movie again. We have time for one more question, so I'm gonna go. Let's go right in front here. We'll bring the mic down to you right here. That Feng Dao, hello, Yang Teacher, hello. Uh, I actually have no question. I want to ask. Is I want. 感谢一下，就是冯导跟严老师给我们带来这么好的作品。因为说实话，我们这一代，其实我跟您还有所有就是老师的那一代隔得有点太远了，就是包括我父母在内，可能都跟你们隔了有个十年什么的。但是我想说的是，对不起，我有点紧张啊。但是我想说的是，就是这是我看过最性感的一个军中的片子，因为对于我们这一代，就是可能军旅的所有东西对我们来说都是古老刻板，呃，然后。就是比较老一代的东西在那儿，然后比较严严肃，但是这个，特别是前半部分，就是我觉得是可是我看过最性感的一个军军官军队的片子，然后谢谢你，就是没什么可说，就是感谢。This was more of a statement than a question. Of all the army films I've seen, this is the most sensual、uh, of all military films I've seen. There's serious elements in it, but it's very very sensuous. Let's、uh, let's turn that into a question. This there is a very sensual quality to this to this film.、Um, you had mentioned the dancers earlier. I mean, connected to the sort of romantic、um, atmosphere that the film creates,、um, it really does create a very stark contrast to the the war sequences that come in the end.、Um, and were you thinking about how to balance those elements?、Um, From the very beginning, in, in terms of structuring the film's tone throughout. It actually is beauty and brutality. It is just like this. 这个这个，这个、我还真不知道怎么平衡的哈。Well, it is quite a contrast between beautiful and beauty and and cruelty and and brutality. I don't know how you balance it. I don't know how I balance it. Okay, I think we have to wrap it up. I'm sorry about that. We got started late, but got, it's such an honor to have you both on stage. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.